Hey guys, it's Sam and this is my spoiler free review of Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is actually this month's House Salt Book Club pick. So House Salt Book Club is a brand new book club and this is our first read. If you have not been properly introduced to House Salt because you do not follow me on Twitter, allow me to introduce you now. you guys like that book club trailer as much as I loved creating it. <laughs> but this will be our first read and we will all be discussing it on my channel next Saturday the 25th of January at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so you'll get to hear more in-depth thoughts and almost like the gushy type reaction spoilery thoughts if you want to join us there and then for all of the books after. So this is a standalone YA fantasy story that follows the main character of Elizabeth and she is an orphan who has been raised in one of the great libraries. These libraries hold magical books, grimoires, that sorcerers have created and imbued with magical power so they're almost like living books. And she is trying to become a warden who are the people that guard these books. Also in this world there are sorcerers and sorcerers are both revered and feared because they make deals with demons in order to have their magical powers. And one Day, she comes in contact with some sorcerers surrounding one of the higher class books and everything goes on from there. So first off we talk about the world building. The world of the great libraries in particular is so wonderful. If you at all like magical libraries, which I think most of us that read and love books do, you will love just the setting of the libraries. And the more that we learn about them and the magical books, there are just so many lines in here that Elizabeth thinks about books or says about books. And just about the books and the library's power and stuff, it just gives you just that like warm cozy nostalgic feeling even though this is a new story. I also enjoyed the visualization of the magic. In this world the magic sort of like manifests as green and I don't know what that is but I always kind of view magic as green. Green or blue typically, sometimes purple, <laughs> but like those are the colors that I kind of associate with magic. So the fact that like there's like green light and things like that with the world and the way that the magic works is really cool. I also like getting to see how the sorcerers use magic because they kind of use magic in a sort of like technology sense in a lot of ways. So this takes place in an almost like Victorian London gothic setting and then you have the magic sort of like making things more alive and that's very fun. Next let me talk about our characters. Elizabeth, our main character, is wonderful. I just loved her and just the fact that she is this child of the library which gets brought up a lot. She's grown up in this library and that gives her just a certain understanding of the magic and the books and everything that just make you as a reader just like love and adore her. What I also really like is that she's very tall and I don't know what it is but the love interest is not like a short person but is like I think her height or possibly shorter and I just really love this like tall woman dynamic with like a smaller dude who still like loves her for being tall. Just like it changes around like the, like the gender roles and things like that and the gender dynamics that I'm like yes that's right it's just a construct. Also with our other character and love interest Nathaniel who is one of the sorcerers. I also really enjoy him and Nathaniel and Elizabeth's dynamic is really great because it's one of those like almost like flustered attraction things that I really enjoy. I haven't quite been able to put a word to it but for example like she is just sort of like clumsier at the beginning and will like knock stuff over and stuff and he doesn't really get mad at her but he's always like you absolute menace and he says it a lot to her and I'm just like I love that like and he's like attracted to her being an absolute menace and I just really highly enjoy that. Also like I mentioned with Nathaniel since he is a sorcerer he has bound himself to a demon which is a being from another dimension. I kind of wish for my anxiety's sake that they didn't use the word demon because language is important sometimes to anxiety and I just like I always associate that with more like paranormal stuff when these aren't really like I would almost say they're fae like in the way that they are. They're just like beings from another dimension and they have magic and things like that. So there's another trope in here that I really like of the magical bound companion and that is what his demon is and his demon is like this found family element that I really enjoy as well and I just really like the trope of like a bound magical companion that is like supposedly evil incarnate but is like helping them. It's just something that I've loved from like 
when I was a teenager and I read the Abhorsen series by Garth Nix where there is a magical talking cat that is really an immensely evil, like, great magical entity stuck in a cat. <laughs> Lastly, we talk about the plot. This did a really good job of balancing the gothic kind of scariness of it at times because there is some like creepy stuff that happens with like humor and just warmth and it just felt very nostalgic to me. There are things about this that as far as like the plot points that are semi-predictable but in that nostalgic way, at least in my opinion, where it you just you just sink into it. You're like yes. I know some of these beats, I know this story, and it feels so soothing. I felt the same way about Margaret Rogerson's first book, The Enchantment of Ravens, which is a fae story. I just felt like that was also this like nostalgic feel, sink into it. Nothing groundbreaking with the plot or the twists or anything, but things that I wanted to see and then did. And I enjoy that. One of those tropes being something involved with a magical bound being, which I will talk about in the live show, I'm sure, because it's a thing that I like, I knew it was coming, I'm like, I love this trope! And just the fact that this whole plot revolved around just the love of stories, the love of books, books being magical, libraries being magical, and there's a lot of scenes, especially towards the end, with the libraries, and just being this like living, breathing thing that I, as a book lover, really enjoyed. So I end up giving Sorcery of Thorns four out of five stars. As I mentioned, you can hear more of my gushy type thoughts in the live show on my channel on the 25th of January, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will link everything for House Salt down below if you want to join us. So comment below and let me know what you thought of Sorcery of Thorns. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!